The following is a live broadcast of a Lone Star community radio program. Recorded and broadcasted live on IRLoneStar.com, Connors FM 104.5, 106.1, and Facebook.com slash IRLoneStar. For more information on this show, please visit our show page at IRLoneStar.com slash shows. To sponsor or donate to this program, visit our donate page at IRLoneStar.com slash donate or email us at lscrstudios at gmail.com, or give us a call at 936-666-1084. Lone Star Community Radio production and broadcast is possible by folks like you. So sponsor and donate today. You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZW LP Conroe and 106.1 KZCC LP Conroe and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Good afternoon and welcome to The Legal Connection with Tony and Cheryl. Uh, Tony Lynn Collins and Cheryl Ellsworth-Jahani, we are two Texas licensed attorneys and we are here every Tuesday on 104.5 and 106.1 Conroe's FM um, talking about legal matters. Um, today we're going to be talking about contact tracing right. and uh, the company that was awarded the $295 million right. Texas contact tracing responsibility or development or whatever it is. Right, right. And um, we're going to have Grant Bynum, your mm-hmm. brother, who's also the head of contact. Uh, uh, Texans Texas. Against Contact Tracing right. and also Open Texas. So right. those are... Facebook uh, groups. And this is a continuation of the show that we had about two weeks ago. When this first came out, it was kind of little known, and now it's become, it's picked up some steam. And so I'm just going to kind of recap a couple of things about this issue that are important, and then we're going to let Grant talk about th- some of the issues that he's been confronted with, with the different things that he's doing with with his uh, group, right? Okay. Okay, so um, uh, the, this particular uh, contact tracing is... Uh, a, a, I guess the best way to put it is it's what has been, uh, I guess I'm reading it's probably the best. It's been about two weeks since it was revealed that Governor Abbott and the Texas Department of State Health Services um, had entered into a contract that, uh, that was uh, it, with a little known North Texas company that was just set up about uh, I two want to years say ago. about two years ago, but mm-hmm. they're um, they were really a New York based company, and mm-hmm. it's very very small. It's only got uh, w- when Grant went about two weeks ago to videotape this where the facility is in Frisco. Nobody was even in the building, right? And they were awarded this this huge contract. And so, um, uh, and the name of the company is, is MTX. MTX Group, mm-hmm. and um, this little known North Texas company recently won the state's nod to coordinate contact tracing for coronavirus patients. It's currently hired 605 people for the job. This is as of yesterday, mm-hmm. but is offering few details of how it will help Texas achieve its ambitious goals. And um, the problem that we're having with this, and the why, the reason it's an issue, is there's a privacy issue because the way they're doing it is contacting the friends of people that may have contacted, may, may have had coronavirus Been or COVID, contact, right. to see if they'll give them information. And they also have their application is through Google and um, Apple, where they can use your phone to trace where you've been. And so there's a huge privacy issue with right. regard to um, uh, the rights that we have in the Constitution and our uh, Fourth Amendment rights. And uh, I, we talked a little bit about Carpenter versus United States, uh, which was a Supreme Court case from about two years ago that uh, said that we, they can't do this without a court order. Right. And so um, the reason it's really important today, specifically, because this is all going down right now, is that First off, uh, the CEO of the technology company that's been entrusted with the state contract for tracing efforts for Texans exposed to coronavirus has claimed a doctorate he never got. He lied on his application. And this was some research that was done by some reporters with the Houston Chronicle. And it ends up that when they did the, the, the investigation and they called the college, they said that he had never received a doctorate, that this person didn't graduate uh, in that part of it. In fact, the last attendance they had for this guy was 2010, and he said that he had graduated in 2012. So uh, they didn't vet this company. And the senators are complaining, um, Texas senators, even um, our Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick said, I haven't seen this contract. And when when these reporters and various senators have asked for the contract, Mm -hmm. they haven't been given a copy of it. Right. Uh, On May 5th, it was, uh, I think it was like May 1st of last month, they issued, uh, they asked 
asked for submissions for contract from like IBM and AccuCenture and various other companies. On May 5th? On, I, but on May 5th is when they opened up the application process. Right. But they closed it on May 7th. And, and gave it to this And gave it to MTX. this company. And over the, all these other companies that had experience in background. And... Um, what Over we, the company's experience and background, what companies? Um, IBM, AccuCenture, and other companies so have actually huge done it. And companies. MTX only has Kentucky that they have even a, a contract with. They they're actually have implemented it, and they're over budget and not doing well, according to what the, the, these articles said. And so we don't. Uh, we know that two. Um, Lobbyists uh, uh, were paid $100,000 by MTX to go to Austin and lobby for this contract, and they got it. Uh, we've got senators, and we're going to read, talk about that a little bit today, for, uh, Texas senators that are saying, we have not seen this, we have not asked about it, it wasn't vetted properly, and we're uncomfortable with this. Mm -hmm. And so we'll talk about that, too. And so since so um, let's get Grant on. Yeah, since Grant is involved in this, and we've got a bunch of senators and people well, who are unhappy. he started it, really, Tony. As a matter of fact, he's gotten some flack, especially in the beginning, for even uh, addressing MTX. So can we uh, bring Grant on? Grant, are you there? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm here. Hello, y'all. <laughs> How are you, Grant? Thank you for waiting. There was an issue with some power here at the station, and so things got a little uh, behind schedule. But uh, Grant Bynum, a founder of Open Texas and a founder of Texans Against Contact Tracing, we're glad you could be here with us today. It's so great to be here again, and I feel like that I'm on the best legal show in the nation because <laughs> nobody is addressing the kind of issues that you are as quickly. There's right. very few people taking the lead, so I want to thank you for doing well, that. Well, we know the Laura Ingram show. She covered the entire thing after we did, yeah. after your help. We did first, us, Grant. Yeah. And she brought up yep. uh, Carpenter versus U.S. and talking about the privacy issues and how we're being traced and we shouldn't be and all that. But you've been right there on top of it filming where there's nobody even in this office. And uh, so tell us about what's going on in your rallies and what you found out. Well, um, we, I, I, uh, it, it's been very recent for me. I think that when we had talked first a couple of weeks ago, uh, I, had, I had just had about uh, seven days or so of – eight days or so of uh, knowledge really to even start looking at. I'd heard of it, but it just hadn't registered that it was a big issue. Right. And if you notice the, um, the press conferences that Governor Abbott does, yeah. well, most of the time, if you're like me, you're listening to the conference, and, and you're waiting for the opening. It's like, who, who's going to get to open – which restaurant at 50 percent, you know, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And then everybody leaves, and then he starts talking about contact tracing, and everybody is ignoring it. Mm -hmm. But it's the biggest issue of all. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, so, three, a, uh, nearly a $300 million contract to this company that's not been vetted. When What happened to the people that are – the companies in Texas? Why didn't they get it? I mean – all this stuff must be coming up in your rallies. We got I, I, we have a copy of a letter from um, Senator Bob Hall where he, he mm -hmm. uh, kind of bullet have points Have you seen out. this, Grant, the letter? Yes. He, uh, he, he actually, we know him really well. He's, he's been a, a good friend of ours, and mm -hmm. he's, he's standing up. Uh, he's speaking at our rallies. He actually sent us that release. Before it got released, oh, uh, just as a courtesy. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. just that's crazy that we've got senators who've never seen this contract, and even Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick said he hasn't seen the contract and he's looking into this. I mean, it's really an issue. So, um, but what have you found out that we haven't discussed? You, I don't know if you heard our opening, but we tried to give a little bit of a heads up. I okay, did. so what what do we need to know? Well, here's uh, here's several things, and uh, you know what? Because I love you guys, I'm actually going to release something that has not been released yet. <laughs> Oh, yeah. We're going to get a little bomb, bombshell on the show. Okay. So get ready. But before I do, because uh, it's, it's changing all the time and, and information is being added, um, first thing is I want to give Jess Fields credit because he, he's the uh, individual investigative reporter that, that broke uh, a lot of the stuff last week. As I far saw as his name, yes, over yes, there. Yes, he's amazing. It's his he's podcast. An, he's, Mm -hmm. Yes, it's an Asian independent, and everybody broke it after he did. Yeah. So I, I want to give him credit. I'm just going to say this one thing. I'm going to read it. It's right straight yeah. out of an article that was in the Houston Chronicle. Yeah. The Jeff Field Show podcast recorded audio of an exchange with the registrar's office at Colorado 
Technical University. Mm -hmm. The woman who answered the phone can be heard telling Fields that Noble did not get a doctorate degree from the school and that there was no yep. record of the attendance past June of 2010. So he's doing the investigative reporting that's breaking this open to show that there's corruption. And I'm going to say one other thing before I let you talk, and that's that yep. lawmakers, including Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, continue to say they're dismayed by the agency's, and that's the Department of Health with Texas, the agency's hastily awarded contract. We should have been in the loop, and we should have known. We should have been able to ask questions, Patrick told supporters, during a town hall via phone Thursday. A spokesman for the Department of State Health Services, however, said the agency is happy with the company's performance so far, which also involved a launching a virtual call center. And that's just, I don't believe that that's the case, is it? What can you tell us? Well, I've got a lot to tell you, so you're going to have to probably stop me because there's so much. Okay. But, um, <laughs> Let's, uh, let's, let's talk a few other things uh, first. Is When Jess, uh, Jess did a really interesting take, um, th there's people already investigating some other things about MTX Group, but he just said, I I'm going to check them out. So I want to highlight a couple other things he said. Mm -hmm. One of the things that was a huge point is the MTX Group. Okay, you, uh, Tony, you mentioned that they've only really completed one project. In Kentucky. They are in, yeah, but they are in about... Uh, I think about at least eight other states, about right, right. 15 even. Mm -hmm, well, mm -hmm. so so we're talking billions of dollars here, right? And that they're they're with. I don't have the exact number, but billions. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, that uh, so I visited the Frisco office, as I said, and it, it's an office that it, it looks like it costs two to three thousand a month max, and it's a teeny office. Well, I thought, okay, surely, surely there are New York offices, you know, a, a massive office. Well, this is what just found out. That office in New York is a house. Oh no! A house. That's ridiculous. Like a like and a little bitty house. Like I don't know how big, but it's a house. It might be a condo. I right. don't know, but it's right. a house. It's Let me, not a. It's. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say I, this. It's kind of right along with what you're saying. This is really important. Um, as at the state, because this um, the president of MTX did an interview, and he didn't. He hasn't done one before, and it was it was limited. But I'm just going to read this these couple of things so that it goes right yeah. with what you're saying. The MTX groups group also developed a learning management system for newly hired tracers that includes training on IT systems and a federal health information privacy law. Uh, and uh, that doesn't make any sense. Through Texas Health Trace, the state will collect data from 4,000 tracers being deployed in Texas by public-private entity groups. Um, MTX Group will provide scheduling, he said, for 1,450 tracers now on board. Now, um, it says those hired by MTX, two state agencies, and Texas A&M University, I don't know how they fit in, how the, that group fits in, asked if the state is pleased with MTX, the MTX Group's initial work, Van Dusen, and he is, uh, I'm not even sure what, he, what his relationship is with the group, but you'll, you probably know, um, said, we are satisfied. They've been working really quickly. They've got calling solutions stood up in a matter of days over a weekend. They have been to this point very good. And um, uh, it says, uh, really, we have no concerns about the work they've done, but if they haven't done any work yet. Earlier this month, MTX won the contract over 10 other bidders, including major corporations such as IBM, AccuCenter, and AT&T, prompting an outcry by some lawmakers that MTX lacked experience to handle such a big job. And it goes on to say the Kentucky problem. Noble, who's the president and CBO, uh, C CEO, I guess, with his wife, um, declined to discuss in detail the cost overruns that had plagued a project that MTX Group was hired by the state of Kentucky to perform last summer. In late January, MTX Group proposed that Kentucky Department of Alcohol Beverage Control pay it $2.9 million, a 123% increase over its original bid, according to the records obtained by uh, the news in Dallas. So they're having problems with this was and in Kentucky? And they're asking for $3 million more in Kentucky, and they didn't even finish the job. It says the, tro the project involved using Salesforce software for many aspects of the agency's licensing and regulatory process. So they didn't even have to do with this, but they weren't completing the project. Well, right, Tony, but let's talk, let's get Grant to tell us the other things that he knows before we get into Kentucky. Let's but focus on Texas. The last Texas. thing is MTX to date has zero field projects, according to what he's saying, but they have zero completed projects from what I'm seeing. Yeah, and it was the Kentucky one that they started. Grant, Kentucky is the only project that they've started so far, or have they done anything in New York? Um, I, I think that, uh, I, actually, I don't want to say because I don't know. I know right. that they have at least eight projects that they've been awarded. Mm -hmm. I don't know what status they are in it. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. Okay. I, well, I do. This is what I do know. Right. Um, so not only is there Albany office, and that that used to be their corporate office right. in Albany, New York, but now it's Frisco. But that uh, not only does it is it a residence, but there are multiple corporations at that residence, oh. all owned by the one in New York. Oh, yep. really? Mm. Yeah, he's got a uh, Noble Real Estate. Mm-hmm. There's another corporation there in a house. Um, he's got uh, at least one more, if not two more, and I, I just don't have the name of the, the third one. Mm-hmm. So he's got a, at a minimum of three, all in one house. So um, it's a house. That that's that's just uh, very very concerning. Yeah. Um, another couple of things, and I don't know if we covered it. We covered just some general things like they they've never they don't have anybody on staff that's ever run a call center. When you have 4,000 people that you're going to train and then do a call center as uh, contact tracers, that's not a good thing. We don't want to hire somebody like that. The people, the other companies that were looked over uh, do have call center experience. Mm-hmm. Right. They're, they're companies like Accenture, IBM, right. and, uh, and companies like that. So uh, they don't have any of that, that kind of experience. Right. Um, what you... Uh, one thing that I'm going to reveal is there's actually two project failures, not just one. Okay. I can't reveal the other one yet, but there are two project failures uh, of, of the MTX group. And Doss Noble recently said, oh, we've never failed any project. Right. But there are two. Well, well we know he's not, he's not telling the truth. Well, because... right, about the whole degree mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. Grant, I'm sure you guys know the, about that, right? Yep, yep, yep. <clears throat> I mean, he's just... Well, he, I want to say that he's he, he does say in his defense that um, he says MTX chief financial officer said Noble never claimed he had a doctorate, even though it's all over everything. We believe it's important to make it extremely clear. We and DOS have never presented uh, on any document, resume, bid response, NFP response, or biography to any entity that he possesses or ever has possessed a doctorate or a Ph.D. MTX CEO Christina Bailey wrote in an email. This question is emanating from Doss' LinkedIn profile. But the thing is, is he's a one-person show, and he does real estate, and he doesn't have the same uh, background or experience to do what we just gave, a $300 million contract to a guy that just opened an office that's from New York. Yeah. This makes no sense. And I know yes. that uh, we uh, they also read that. Um, that the legislature, the, the senators, have been asking for a copy of this contract, and they haven't provided a copy of the contract yet? That's insane. We know that um, the McMillian, uh, McWilliams, uh, DeAndra, and I think, uh, uh, I guess maybe her brother or husband, but two, two lobbyists got 50000 uh, were, were paid $50,000 each mm-hmm. uh, and went to Austin, I guess, May 5th or somewhere around the time that they submitted this application, and then they got the contract by May 7th. What contract opening is only open for two days Yeah, and then awarded yes. to somebody that no one even knows and that's not from Texas? Yes, I agree. And uh, j- just to add a little context to that, I've been involved with RFPs and they, nothing along that to that level. But I've been involved with RFPs and submitting proposals and things like that for it mm-hmm. uh, to up to five people, um, five companies, that is. So personally, in my background, I've had that. And in that kind of process, that is, that's, that's just three or five companies. That's a multi-month, right. multi-month right. process. Well, well so um, how did that happen? I mean, they've got these two lobbyists there. I mean, we know that there have been some issues with campaign contributions, uh, from MTX <clears throat> to some of your local um, council people, I believe, Grant, and and things like that. But I just don't see that making them decide so quickly. Was it because they were all scared about COVID and, and Oklahoma had hired them and New York had hired MTX, so Texas just said, yeah, that'll work for us too? I don't know, but I, I have my suspicions, but I don't know. But I do know that the person that signed this contract is Phil Wilson, and I want to bring up his name. Phil Wilson is an interim uh, acting executive uh, leader of the Department of Health and Human Services okay. in Texas. He literally got hired in early March, so around uh, very interestingly, right around the time that uh, all the COVID uh, concerns and executive orders were being talked about and came out. Um, so he has to my knowledge, no medical experience. However, he does have plenty of experience 
with the state of Texas in other roles. In other words, my suspicion is he's he's just a uh, a bureaucrat. He's a politician. That's kind of a yep mm-hmm. politician mm-hmm. that they just uh, and again this is just me. I don't have any knowledge or you know exact. I haven't done the research, but I'm very suspicious that he was brought in and all of a sudden he made this huge decision. And again, it was in two days. So there's something wrong with that. I will and, say this. Um, okay, uh, yep. go ahead. Well, the Houston Chronicle says the deal appears to have been put together within just a few days. Um, On MTX hired Austin-based lobbyists Andrea and Dean McWilliams for up to $50,000 each, according to public disclosure documents. And this is the reporters from the Chronicle. Others who submitted bids include contracting giants, and we already talked about that, Accenture and Maximus, IBM, uh, representatives of the company said. And um, But just, I, I want to go back, and I know that you'll have a lot more information about this because you've been, you know, yeah. ha- having the rallies and what have yep. you. But the contact tracing, the way they, they won't talk about how they're implementing it, but this is what it talks about in an article called Texas Scorecard, and I'm not sure... They're just, I guess they're like a, um, a, a, a group of people that kind of watches out uh, with, with what's going on with our government. It says, according to yes, the CDC, with, do you know who the Texas... Them, I do. They're with Empower Texans. So that's, okay. that's kind of their, uh, their, their online vehicle, and they tend to be a conservative group. Oh, good. Okay. Well, I'm just, I'm just looking at they've collected data, which is important to this, because we're really not getting anything from the government, so we have to rely on other sources like you and... Texas scorecard and and uh, Jess Fields and what have you. Um, according to the CDC, contact tracers need to, and this is what this is how their Texas scorecard says contact tracing is supposed to work. Immediately identify and interview people with SARS or COV2 infections and COVID-19. So first the thing is identify people with that have been tested positive, which is really kind of difficult in Texas um, because you can't rely on a lot of the testing, but that's kind of that's a medical issue. I don't really know anything about it. Then the next thing is support isolation of those who are infected. So I guess once you find out who's infected now uh, from their neighbors or the hospital or wherever you get this, this stuff that's supposed to be private information, um, they're supposed to support them, like help them, call them, and give them guidance, I guess. Uh, I don't know how um, this, uh, this, this MTX is going to do that because I don't – it, it, oh, I understand that they're hiring only college students. So where's the college student background to be supporting these people? But that's what I understand. Do you know, are. Grant, do you know how they're going to do this? Yes, uh, somewhat. Uh, I do somewhat. So I'll, I will share what I know. Um, so you, you brought up a good point that traditional contact tracing is, is supposed to be uh, supervised under, under a, a, a physician. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the physician making the call, but it's going to be someone that, all that information goes to the physician. Mm-hmm. So, and, and that's kept and, and again, protected by uh, HIPAA. Right. And it's also voluntary. So if the, if the, that's in the past. If, so if a person that had SARS or TB or AIDS uh, said no, then it's, it's not going to happen, and that's just the end of it. Right. But in this case, what will happen is uh, there's 4,000, like you said, uh, University of North Texas students, because that's, mm-hmm. that's close to the Frisco office mm-hmm. and, the, and other people that they're going to hire that have no medical knowledge right. or background. And they're going to be uh, making calls to folks. So right. they're going to be making calls. They're also going to be documenting it using Salesforce. Right. Uh, that's a very sophisticated um, uh, CRM, customer relationship management kind of software that's going to be adapted for mm-hmm. this. So. And this is this is a twenty seven month right. contract. Right, right. Did so, you say a twenty seven month contract? Right, and, and, and uh, Senator Hall talks about that in his uh, letter to yeah. uh, Governor Abbott that we're going to talk about a little bit. And he's asking Senator Hall's asking that he please don't go forward with it. And we're going to yeah. talk about that in a minute. But the um, that that these kids are just. I mean, we have kids that are in college. They're not trained to be to know what the hip, I mean, yes, they could be uh, it's on a one day training center or session or whatever, but they're going to be asking private questions and to people that are beginning to get out because they're going to believe that they need to be giving out and they won't know their rights unless they read their rights first. If I had um, COVID, I doubt seriously I'm going to tell a telephone solicitor all my business. I wouldn't tell them anything, but that's kind of here nor there. The other things that they say that there's well, but it was it was voluntary before. Grant, did you say that this will all be mandatory? They will have to answer these questions now? Christy, it, they, a lot of people are saying it's uh, 
it's uh, voluntary. Yeah, I don't, I've never read anything saying that it was mandatory. The problem is when you ask somebody a question and they they don't know that it's not required by right. statute, right. then they're going to give up information that's private that they shouldn't and be. And they don't want to give and up. It will, and yeah, it's and that that's and then the, the the tracing with the phones and using these applications on and and it, all the different ways that they can use it because they're talking about when I was reading about the MTX background. Um, they're they're using a Google or a Facebook application program. So clearly that's not just calling somebody. That's getting information and then finding out their phone number and then tracing where they've been and who they're talking with. Oh, yeah. That's a violation under Carpenter versus United States, uh, uh, Carpenter versus United States. That's definitely a constitutional violation under the Fourth Amendment. Anyway, the other things they say they're doing, and I don't know how they're going to do this, but they say they're going to warn contacts of their exposure assess their symptoms and risk and provide instructions and next steps. I don't know how these college kids are doing this, but I think it's completely unethical to warn their contacts. So by the way, your friend's got COVID or the person that you do business with has got COVID. What if that's incorrect? What if they answered the question exactly. wrong? Exactly. Um, well, and these tests are so unreliable anyway, it creates just this incredible incredible mess yeah and then it's like a it's like having the big you know the mark uh, an a yeah the, you know yeah. the adultery mm-hmm. a or whatever mm-hmm. you've marked yourself now and and this could get out a list because it's no longer private it says they're going to link those that information they've collected with symptoms to testing and care and at this point they're not really helping the person that's got COVID anymore no they're they're tainting that person they're tattling on them and it says they have to maintain a turnover and oh this is uh, to finish that that section Link those with symptoms to testing and care, um, and then they have to turn over to police if they're asked. That's yeah. crazy. If the police ask them. See, all of this stuff this says is, it's voluntary and all that. That's, but That's insanity. That's yeah. complete HIPAA violation. Well, well, so I think the important thing, Grant, since we have you on the phone and we want to use you as a, a resource... Um, it's, you know, we're upset. We're all upset about MTX, right? You're upset right. about MTX. But right. that's not really, it doesn't stop there. That's just the tip of the iceberg. We don't want this contact tracing, period. Is that right? Is that your stand? Yes, but uh, to, to, to really m- make the process go forward, it's important to stop the contract. Because at that point, once we stop the contract, we need to have a, a discussion, a well-rounded discussion with a lot of people that he, that's really led by our legislators. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the key part. When when this was introduced, it's one thing to give the department, uh, Texas Department of Health and Human Services, leeway to spend a little money on something that doesn't affect any new laws or bring any new laws. Right, right. And this, I love the way Senator breaks, Hall talks so, about all that. Yeah, this breaks so many new laws. So it, it, this, we need a really wide-ranging discussion about even moving forward on contact tracing, much right. less this contract, and it needs to be run by the legislature. Now, I, I, I frankly believe that once that happens, uh, it will be stopped for good. I want, um, right. I, I want. <laughs> I think it would be informative for our listeners as well as you too, because I love uh, Senator Hall's letter that he wrote to Governor Abbott. Yes. It addresses each one of the things you just talked about. So Christine's going to yeah, read that to just us, just from really just from your perspective. Read his letter; it's uh, great. Well, I don't want to read the whole thing oh, with okay. Grant on the phone. Okay, but um, he's talking. He does make the point of liberty lost. No, I like this, Grant. No matter how much lipstick you put on this project, mass surveillance and data collection constitute a gross invasion of privacy and trampling of individual liberty. Uh, Bob Bob Hall is senator for District Two. Grant, where is that? Is that Canton? Uh, it's uh, Rockwall. Oh, uh, okay. So that- Rockwell. That's going to be uh, a suburb uh, really close to Dallas. Right, yeah. And uh, so I, I, that's fantastic. Somebody cared. Anger, he says people have had enough of excessive and unnecessary government overreach. And, you know, the whole thing with all this research, I know, Grant, you and I have talked about this so many times, is that because a state of emergency has been declared, they are rushing all this stuff through. Nothing applies anymore because we're in this state of emergency. Um and he just talks about health and well-being and how uh, crime and has increased and it's unnecessary, non-COVID deaths because of unemployment and economic stresses, so true. And then this, the, now we're, he's talking about the contract it was awarded with no legislative oversight. This is what you've been saying, actually, and Tony's been saying, no legislative oversight and without due process safeguards mandated by legislation. 
And then he's talking about the feasibility. But where do you see? So so do you really feel like I feel like you've started a two very important grassroots movements. This thing about MTX is just started by you, Grant. And I know that uh, personally have knowledge of that. But where do you see do you, do you think because of all of this interest and focus that you yourself have stirred up with the help of those that are helping you have stirred up. Do you think it's possible for us to sit down and have a real discussion about whether this should even go forward? What do you think is going to happen? I, I do. I think, I think with, uh, frankly, uh, we, we did a lot of work in the background. There's been a lot of uh, work done by many people, not just me. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just one person. But, uh, but with all the people like Senator Hall and then some recent people, that, uh, oh, sorry, this was just released. There's three more representatives that have joined up and said this is absolutely wrong. Good. So there's, about, there's about seven. Who are they? Seven or eight now. Uh, one of them is um, uh, Steve Toff in yes, your area. I thought it was. So right. He's really? He's early one. Yeah, he's, he's one of the first two or three, so thank you, mm-hmm. Steve. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Also, Valerie Swanson. Um, let's see. Hold on just a second. I have him written down. Tenderholt, and I don't remember his first name. I think he's in... Uh, East Texas, mm-hmm. Tinderholt, and then Bristol Kane. Okay. Just uh, and he's, uh, I believe, in the Austin area. So he he just is joining and saying, "No, we're stopping this contract." Yeah, I had read that Steve so, Toft was against it, and so I was waiting for you to see, you know, bring that one up if you hadn't. But yes. So yeah. the, so the contract is withdrawn. Uh, then it, the, and that goes away. Then you're hoping what? What will happen I, next? I, I, I believe that that it, it will basically be run through legislature uh, through the next session, or we need to call a special session, frankly. If, if the department, Texas Department um, of Health and Human Services is so insistent, and Governor Abbott, frankly, is so insistent on pushing this on us, then we need a legislature to decide on that. This does not need to be decided uh, by executive order. And so s- I believe that will happen, and the momentum is, is going our side. Well, I know so that I read some articles where yeah. um, even Senator Hall was saying that this is going to be a taint on Governor Abbott's um, uh, his, his, you know, his legacy if he, this doesn't, something isn't done about this. And basically what uh, Senator Hall was saying was, for these reasons, we need to reconsider it. We've lost our liberty. People are angry because there's too much unnecessary government overreach. There's fear because it's caused by the federal, state, and local governments who overreach about this virus. Um, they're, uh, it's overcoming the fear in the hearts of Texans is the major obstacle to getting our economy moving and our communities back to living, even when all government restrictions have been removed. Contact tracing will only prolong that fear. No kidding. It says, and because our economy is driven by commerce, commerce requires two things, consumer confidence and money flow. Fear, if unabated, stifles commerce, and stifled commerce will restrict the flow of money. Without growth in commerce and an increase in the flow of money, our economy cannot recover. Contact tracing will prolong fears that thus restrict economic growth. We've got the health and well-being. He's, and then he goes on to talk about a big reason is the contractor. And it's something we've been talking about over and over, and it's so important. The state contract was awarded with no legislative oversight without the due process safeguards mandated by our legislation. Mm -hmm. Questions remain as to the efficacy of the selected contractor, MTX. These are reports citing its failure to fulfill the terms of its own previous agreements. How could a company with a questionable performance record record have been rigorously vetted in such a short acquisition period? Two days. There's no way. Mm -mm. How do we expect... Two days, 11 companies. Yes. (laughs) How do we expect a company that has only a few small $1 to $2 million contracts to manage a $300 million contract that requires rapid mobilization? What proof is there that this company... And it's not just Texas. They've got contracts with other states, too. How can this tiny little company take on all these states? Senator Hall says it best. He says, what proof is there that a company with only a couple of hundred employees located mostly in India right, to recruit, Grant train, and manage over 4,000 tracers to do something that has never been attempted on this scale. The feasibility is to what extent is contact tracing on the scale necessary to reduce the rate of the infection, to prevent an outbreak even feasible if it depends on voluntary reporting by citizens, who shouldn't be have to give that up anyway. Mm-hmm. The data strongly supports and suggests that there are many times as many people with the virus who are asymptomatic then there are people who have been tested positive. Therefore, contact tracing will only identify a very small percentage and invade their privacy. And I just want to add that 
that he is saying that this is what we're requesting of Governor Abbott. I know this is what you're saying in your rallies because he says it so well. In fact, this might be your words that he is using in this. Mm -hmm. um, it is clear that the initial predictions that we all reacted to were grossly wrong. Contact tracing may have been some limited value that has been implemented at the very beginning of the outbreak. However, at this point, a statewide tracing system is not necessary. We also now know that the elderly and immune compromised are far uh, are by far the most vulnerable, not the young and healthy. Rather than squandering our resources by continuing policies that assume homogenous infection and death distributions among age groups, our limited resources should be deployed far more effectively by focusing on those the most vulnerable. Your leadership, and he's talking to Governor Abbott, has been instructional in flattening the infection curve and limiting death. So we give, we should give kudos for Governor Abbott for that. Your promoting physical distancing resulted in far fewer hospitalizations. Kudos to Governor Abbott for that, because it's true. Unlike at the beginning of this emergency in March, and because of your leadership, the hospitals are now prepared and equipped to handle any sudden surge. We are currently using less than 2% of the hospital beds for COVID patients, and hospitalizations are declining. And I know that for a fact, my husband's a doctor, and he said that. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what he's asking. Do you remember Governor Perry's ill-fated, ill-advised, ill-conceived HPV vaccine uh, mandate that was such a disaster that it permanently stained his legacy? That blunder pales in comparison to this proposed tracking program. Yeah. Please reconsider this decision while Texans still have confidence in your leadership. Governor Hall said it best, and then he ceases it to Lieutenant uh, Patrick, Dan Patrick. And I know that I wanted to have you talking more than this, but this is your words to me. This is your words to the community. Everything you have said has been said by Governor Hall as though you were having a, a, a coffee talk with him. So well, I um, think you have, haven't you, Grant? He's been at your rallies. Yeah, yeah he's... Yeah, he, he's a friend. We, we text it. But but he said it much better than I did, frankly. He's, he's, br he's a brilliant man. I don't man. think so. He, <laughs> I, everything yeah, he, he said is exactly what you've said. Okay. Well, he's, he's a brilliant man, and he's a very courageous man, and I would vote for him for any office. Really? Anyway. Well, yes. that, that, the, everything that we've talked That's about, great. though, is, is just scaring me to death. And um, now, what else can you tell us that we don't know about, about your rallies? It hasn't gotten crazy like the, the, the riots and stuff we've had recently, but what's going on with all that? Uh, we, we had a rally uh, last week. I believe it was the first one in Texas. And we wanted to, it, we've only been operational for about two weeks, mm -hmm. but um, we, we wanted to get something in place. So we had about 150 at that first rally, and this was in Frisco. This was on Tuesday night. Yeah. So it, it was a great turnout. Yeah. And, um, but when we went to the rally, it was actually at the MTX group uh, headquarters in Frisco. Mm -hmm. um, we, it, was, it was really funny because Doss knows about our group, and he's actually sent me messages. And he sent me a message, and he said, mm -hmm. hey, Grant, uh, he said, mm -hmm. he actually called me Bynum. Hey, Bynum. <laughs> hey, 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 Bynum, uh, just want to let you know, I know about your protest, and I uh, want to let you know, hey, we're, that's no problem. Hey, we, we respect uh, democracy and protest, so you just come on and do your protest, and hey, we're, uh, let me know if you want some uh, restaurant food and water. We'll take care of you. But, but I mean, then what he, He's being antagonistic, yes. obviously. He's being rude. Yeah, yeah. So then, uh, then uh, we, we ended up. Uh, and you know this, Christy, I, I've been talking to you about, but we, we ended up, we went to the rally and we show up. He's got three security guards, uh, three security oh guard cars. Now we know where that 300 million is going. <laughs> yeah, three, three cars, and they're all saying, you can't park here. So we go about 10 minutes away and park. And I said, but we can still, we're still going to walk here, but we're just not going to park in here. I said, okay, well, can't control that. So we went ahead and parked, and then we came back, walked back, and then uh, four or five huge police cars showed up. And in our rallies, we have never had a police car ever show up except for one at the very end. Oh, my gosh. And we had all these police cars showed up, and they said, nope, sorry, you can't be here. And so um, it's private property, so it's a little bit different. But that was a much different message than, hey, let's have some food and water for right, you. Right, right, right. He was so trying to get rid of you because you're tainting his uh, ability to make – 300 million when he was just a, 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 a millionaire that did real estate out of New York before and with a call center possibly in India. And now he's over here and he's uh, going on a half million dollars or more with projects and he has no proven track record. So I'm really, um, I, so, you know, if, if there was vetting 
and and we could see that there was a history and the setup was there and the structure was there, that'd be one thing. But we already know that when you went and you videotaped his office, right. there was no structure whatsoever. And what happened to giving work to Texans that need work right now? Why are we giving work to a, 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 a company that came from New York that hasn't even been here? Clearly it's not a minority or a woman owned. I mean, I don't know what they went through with that, mm-hmm. but $300 million is quite a bit of money. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's not the kind of contract like you were saying that would go through in just a couple of days like this happened. So there's got to be some answers. Now, let me ask you this. Have you seen the contract? Uh, I've seen a redacted version, but I, about 10 days ago, I got uh, I put in my Freedom of Information Act right. uh, request, and you, apparently you're, you, they're required to give you at least something after 10 days. Yes. So I was able to get some information yesterday. It didn't include the contract, but it did include every single company that uh, bid on the project and a couple of the names, especially one was very surprising, not MTX. Oh, really? Who was it? Do you have that list? Well, that, yeah, I do, but that's my reveal. That's my reveal to you. Oh, okay. (laughs) Okay. I'm I'm, going to break it. Okay, break it. So, uh, so, you know, we're, we're concerned about, about privacy, right? And so, uh, MTX work could, uh, could, um, could be taking our health data, personal data, sending it to, away to India, um, sending it, putting it in an app, uh, putting it in a Salesforce database. Yeah. Um, a lot of monitoring is my point. Right. Well, what would happen if MTX also had access to every single toll record? Every single what record? Toll record. Toll. In Texas. Like where you drive on the toll road? Correct. Okay. And, and that's so funny you're talking about that because I'm looking at an article that we were going to talk about about you are being tracked about license plate readers mounted on police cars, objects, road signs, bridges, and how they can monitor you through your car. Well, so what are you saying, Grant? They would be able to track our movements? I'm saying that one of the companies that bid on this project was the North Texas Tollway Authority. What? Oh. Wow. Well, th- I want to say real quick, because you brought that up, because that's very interesting. A little notice, and it's another article by the American Civil Liberties Union. A little notice surveillance technology designed to track the movements of every passing driver is fast proliferating proliferating on America's streets. Automatic license plates, readers mounted on police cars or on objects like road signs and bridges, toll raids, use small high-speed cameras to photograph thousands of plates per minute. The information captured by the readers, including the license plate number and the date and the time and location of every scan is being collected and sometimes pulled into regional sharing systems. As a result, enormous databases of innocent motorist location information are growing rapidly. This information is often retained for years or even indefinitely with few or no restrictions to protect to privacy rights and sold to other companies. In July of 2012, the ACLU affiliates in 38 states and Washington sent Public Records Act requests to almost 600 local and state po- police departments as well as other state and federal agencies to obtain information on how these agencies use license plate readers. In response, um, they received 26,000 pages of documents detailing the use of the technology around the country. Oh, my um, goodness. Click on the map icon the map to learn how police in your state license plate track your movements and your private information. And that's only the documents that they're getting from your car. The documents paint a startling picture of technology deployed with too few rules that is becoming a tool for mass routine location tracking and surveillance. License plate readers can serve a legitimate law enforcement purpose when they alert police to location of a car associated with a criminal investigation. Right. But such instances account for a tiny fraction of the license plate scans, and too many to police departments are storing millions of records and selling that information about innocent drivers. Moreover, private companies are also using license plate data reader, um, license plate readers, and sharing information they collect with police with little or no oversight or privacy protections. A lack of regulation means the policies governing how long our local data is being kept vary. Um, and it goes so, to- Grant, are you saying that it, that the North Texas Toll Company... Tollway Authority. Mm-hmm. The North Texas Tollway Authority bid on this, and, and they have that kind of surveillance mm-hmm. capability. And so... Uh, and what no is restrictions your- on who they give it to. Yeah, and well, they can sell they, it, even. I, mm-hmm. um, I, to a company I, I in India. Just- I just found out about the NTTA as far as being on this, mm-hmm. but, but what? So I don't. I did. It was kind of a it, when I saw that name, I was like, "Whoa! Are yeah. you kidding me?" Yeah. And so then I started. Um, I asked somebody that's in the know, and he said, "Well, that's that's actually 
uh, a semi-private entity. It's not a government entity. So, I didn't know that. Mm-mm. Yeah, Mm-mm. I didn't know that either. So all this information is semi-private. Um, I don't know if they could have developed this, and I also don't know if they were maybe asked to do just a small part of the project. But the, the, the scary thing is all the surveillance that's already being done by NTX and then adding all the location data, they could immediately track if somebody is in a certain location and – in a collaborative, a co- what's the word? Collaborative, mm-hmm. collaborative co- co- information. Oh. Collaborate. And Corro- co- to corroborate. 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 Yes. Now this is but on. To a, collaborate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Well, Sorry. there was an article to- about MTX, and, it's, and they're, they're touting MTX. In fact, they're promoting what you're talking about, passing on private information and, and data they've collected about people that they're getting through different resources. MTX is also expanding, this is this article, um, and it's through, um, it's called MTX Launches a Coronavirus Disease Control and Tracking <laughs> Application for U.S. Government Agencies Using Google Cloud Platform. MTX is also expanding the application to provide a local health organization's similar capabilities for treating patients with symptoms or people who are at risk. This is to promote it. I'm surprised they're even promoting it like this. It provides a centralized monitoring and control system that enables actionable insights to mobilize the necessary resources quickly while adhering to all required government data, privacy, and security laws. But they're using Google Cloud, an application um, that they're with, with this other information. It says MTX Group is a global cloud technology partner that enables um, organizations to become a fit enterprise through digital transformation strategy. MTX is powered by the Maverick Artificial Intelligence Platform and has deep expertise in the public sector providing proprietary designs and innovative concepts accelerators. So basically they're using all this information and passing it on with no restrictions whatsoever to this. Unfettered access. Unfettered access. And that's really scary. And that goes to Carpenter versus the United States. And just well, well, let me ask okay. him this, though. Um, so, Grant, you're concerned that if not only do they have all of our information, all of our social networking friends, all the people that we hang out with, they know everything. If they can track <laughs> our movements, then they can come in and forcibly detain us. Or how do you see that going? Um, I, I don't I don't know all the uh, ways of why, how it could go. But I do know that in uh, Cedar Park, did you hear about this? Uh, this was what happened. I, was, I did hear something. Yeah, this was this was this past Tuesday. This is even before uh, MTX was really been rolling. But this was this past Tuesday in Cedar Park, uh, Texas, two uniformed um, uniformed people, and I believe they were policemen, knocked at the door of a person in Cedar Park at the residence and said, we want to collect this information. And they wanted health information. They wanted personal information. And they didn't want just a few in- pieces of information. They wanted a truckload of information. Mm-hmm. The, the person had uh, some exposure to, to coronavirus. Mm-hmm. So they wanted all this information. Uh, the person said, no, I'm not going to provide it. So then after that, uh, this person got a threatening letter from the, the county uh, health commissioner saying you're going to provide this or else. Oh my, that's what we were talking and, about in the first part of the show. They can't yeah. do that. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. Unless it's so, a state of emergency. Right. But um, that mm-hmm. goes to Carpenter versus uh, United States. And it goes to, I think, Hull's letter to Grant and your message is that this was done hastily. Okay, so we made some mistakes. Now let's repeal it. Let's end the state of emergency and all of that. So what happened? They got a threatening letter, but that was it? I mean, that's not good, uh, but... <laughs> well, no, I, I don't know yet. We, we actually want to have him uh, on our show. And if I talk to him, uh, I'm, I'm going to get his information. I'll send it to you so you can have him on your show. Oh, that'd be great. Right. Well, that was kind of like they were doing to you at the airport when you came back from New York. Oh, yeah. The day yeah. after we mm-hmm. had our show, they mm-hmm. you miraculously or oddly or I guess I or, know. Uh, it, it, it just ironically it. Mm-hmm. it repealed. So you no longer, you just hit that two-week part where. And that was for 12 days. Right. And they were they were calling you and asking you. and They, they had could under come out arrest. to the house. If I got caught out on the street, they had my driver's license number. Mm-hmm. Uh, they could. Well, I was facing a fine of $1,000 and up to 180 days in jail or both. You Which, know? And but they're actually starting to enforce this. I mean, Grant, you know, when I went to New York, that's what I was facing. And the DPS officer that was put in charge of m- me um, actually called 
to see if I was at home. Right, right. And my understanding is they were, and we read it in a couple of articles on our last show, that they're hiring the DPS off-duty mm-hmm. to be some of the tracers. Mm-hmm. And that's law mm-hmm. enforcement. They mm-hmm. can't wow. have law enforcement mm-hmm. come in your house with their little the badge and their, mm-hmm. their uniform telling yeah, you to get this exactly. information over because that's a HIPAA violation. I know. And it's a complete violation of the Carpenter versus United States Constitution violation, Fourth Amendment. And I'm just going to read this one little part of of what Carpenter versus U.S. is, because it's such an important uh, what privacy. What year was that, 2017? Um, it was decided in June on June 22nd, 2018, okay. but it was argued in November of 2017. Okay. Um, Carpenter versus U.S. Um, was a landmark United States Supreme Court case concerning the privacy of historical cell phone location records. We're not even talking about HIPAA and all of your personal Health information stuff, right. that will be disclosed on a list and then sold to who knows who all over the world, Mm -hmm. and the last people we need to have our information are India and China and that group, right? Mm -hmm. Um, The court held, uh, well, we're getting the wind-up notice here, but but basically your Fourth Amendment rights are being violated if there's not a search warrant or a court order or a true reason under the pandemic to give this information out. So if someone comes to your door, do not give them your HIPAA information under any circumstances. Uh, Yeah, I don't give them any information. Is there anything you want to add, Grant, before we got to wrap up, but is there anything... I just want to say to uh, your readers, and and first of all, thank you for having me on the show and just for highlighting this, but I want to say I heard it from somebody else, so it's not original, but uh, if we were talking about this a year ago, I would have been the first to say it. That's just conspiracy theory. That's ridiculous. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But it is not conspiracy theory. Yeah, Cheryl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you don't have to apologize for demanding privacy and constitutional right. right. It doesn't matter to what level they're being abridged, and we don't have to wait for them to happen. And you uh, have to we, know your rights, too, just like you're yeah. saying. Do not give out your personal information. You, you can't have Fourth Amendment rights. Right. Right. And you have to object and do exactly what you're doing, Grant. You have to bring to the attention of the public because they do not know what's going on behind the scenes. And we are not computer. No. Computer. We're conservative. This is crazy. Right. I know. I know. But, but that's really it. Okay. Just, just, just to stand strong and don't don't be a, don't be ashamed and and be a leader and 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 speak up and and speak up on social media. You're already speaking up on the show, but and speak thank up on you, social media, Senator yeah. Hall and and Senator Talk you, and yeah. all of the legislatures that Mr. are helping Fields. us and bringing this up. Yeah, and Hotsey. Okay, Grant. Thank you again for being on our show. Blessings. Love we love you too, and okay. we want to remind our listeners to. Serve God by serving others. And tune in next week, Legal Connection Show. Right. We'll see you then. Bye. Today's show was recorded and broadcasted live on IRLoneStar.com, Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and all rights and ownership are reserved to Lone Star Community Radio. For more information regarding this program and Lone Star Community Radio, visit us online at IRLoneStar.com. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's community radio station, serving the community with local programming on TV, radio, and online. If you enjoy today's program, please support us by sponsorship or starting your own show. Contact us today by phone or text at 936-666-1084 or email the station at lscrstudios at gmail.com.